Hello, nerds, and welcome to the Four Nerds Cast. You're on with Happy Bandit, Keelan, the wife, and Laura the Great. And before we get into anything else, I've got to tell the story real quick. I love living in the future. Today, I used my phone and the remote desktop app from Chrome mm-hmm. to connect to my computer at home, where I then opened up a remote desktop software to connect to another computer. <laughs> wow. I did all this while waiting on our, our order at Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I, my, my plan was foiled, though, because at some point in that process, it no longer allowed me to type. Uh, oh, no. And so I ended up having to run by the house and, and finish it up. But <sighs> The future is not ready for you? Not quite. <laughs> no, I was... I was a, a couple levels too far incepted. Yeah. <laughs> so I came across this story, this article, titled, Critically Hated Movies That Are Actually Awesome. Hmm. And I thought it would be interesting to discuss these. Didn't look too far through this, so I only got maybe two, three, four deep. But I knew we had to, to talk about this because of the very first movie listed here is something very near and dear To one of our hearts. Hmm. I know it's coming. The number, or the first movie on this list is Hook. Yes! I did not know what was coming. Yes, I was hoping it was it, but I was like, no, no. I'm the only one in the world that likes Hook, right? Banger Ray. Banger Ray. It's a cult classic. It's a great, great movie, and I love it so much. I think it's one of Dustin Hoffman's finest performances. He was very good in that. I think it was, he was brilliant. One of my first movie crushes was on Rufio. Really? Oh, my gosh. I'll never hilarious. forget when we saw a Rufio at the fair. Yes. Oh, that was oh. so great. We're all sitting there yelling, Rufio, Rufio. <laughs> yeah. It was so great. I was like, bangerang. So the reason it made it on this list, looking at Rotten Tomatoes, its audience score is a 76. Mm. Wow. Which, that's pretty fair. It's a good, right? Yeah, it's a good audience score. The critics is 29%. Wow. Which well, it's such a good movie, though. Siskel and Ebert don't like kid movies, Okay, <laughs> Do you know who, who has the star performance from that, though? The, the person who got put in the box is a well-known actress. You remember that? The person who got put? In that the- box with the scorpions. It's a well-known actress. 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 Well, the only it's Glenn Close. Oh. But yeah. she's dressed up as a pirate with a beard. As oh, a man. really? Well, that's amazing. Yeah. I had no idea. I didn't either. Yeah, that's actually a, uh, a joke in the animated pirates movie, the, the claymation one that's made by the. Oh, the, yeah, the uh, one with uh, David Tennant. Yeah, the yeah. Wallace and Gromit style oh, one. Yeah. 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 Oh, there's I love Hardman. that one. Hugh Grant. Yeah, there's, mm-hmm. there's a. I forget what they call him or her. It's. Very clearly a girl with a beard. Yeah. It's called That's the Boo funny. Box, by the way. Yeah, the Boo, boo Box. Put, put in the Boo Box. Yeah. Boo. So the second movie on here, Alien 3. I like that okay. one. That's the prison That's one. the one with the prison? Mm-hmm. Yes, I love that one. It's okay. I, I love that one. <laughs> Is that the one where she's she like turns around and throws the basketball and it goes in the hoop? Is yes. that the one? Yes. Did you know that was real? Really? I didn't know it was and, real. And, Everybody's reaction was legitimate. They oh, actually wow. the had to scene. cut it a little bit sooner than they wanted to on the reaction because Ron Perlman swore right after that because <laughs> he couldn't believe she actually made it. It was the coolest concept because it was the first time we saw a xenomorph, you know, attach itself to something besides a human, mm-hmm. and the idea that it would be more dog-like because it, yeah, attached to a dog. That was so the first I'm, time that we saw yeah. that idea. Yeah, of course, now with uh, Prometheus and and. Those that series coming or Alien? What was the new one? Um, Covenant. Covenant. With those movies, now we see that a lot more. Yeah. But that was it was brilliant. That movie was brilliant. brilliant on movie. on Rotten Tomatoes, uh, this score, er, the critics and audience score is actually the same, at forty seven percent. Oh wow! Mm. Which a uh, little below average, but again. <laughs> At that point, it had a lot to live up to. Well, it did, because it was coming off of the first Alien, which was probably one of my favorite movies of all time, period. And the second one even was was 
just as good as the first yeah, one. I, yeah, I love Aliens. So, I liked it. Yeah, I liked yeah. it a lot it was, better myself. That was the one that I've seen the most because I was, you know, we had, I was a kid with HBO when that one came out and it was yeah. on all the time. We had it taped off HBO on mm-hmm. VHS and yep, we watched yep. it so many yep. times. Up next, The Cell. Oh, we I just love watched The that. Cell. Wait, which one? No, no, that's the one with the, the where they go into the guy's mind. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like uh-huh. The criminal's mind. Uh-huh. Jennifer, Jennifer Lopez. Jennifer Lopez, okay. Yeah. Vincent. That's also good. Jennifer. 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 That is the one with the crazy stuff. scene with the horse. Yes. 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 That is the most bizarre um, scene. The whole thing with him, with the, it, that movie was sort of my childhood sort of intro into the whole mm-hmm. concept of like BDSM. Oh, yeah. Because the whole scene where he's got the cape mm-hmm. and it's like hooked directly into his back so and everything. Crazy. I was like, who would do that? And mm-hmm. then, of course, it's the funny. internet came around and um, who, I got to know more about did that. that movie? Who now you're into it. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> you directed it? Yeah, well, and wrote, because the reason I'm asking is because it, it, it the concept kind of reminds me of another movie. Uh, it was directed but. by Tarsum Singh. Okay. And written by Mark Pro. Okay. Proto. Protosivic. <laughs> Mark, I'm sorry. I know you're listening. <laughs> I, I apologize. <laughs> The reason I'm asking is because there's a lot of concepts in that movie that reminded me very much of Pan's Labyrinth. Mm. And so I, I was just kind of curious if Del Toro had anything to do with that one or not. But uh, Rotten Tomato. Audience score, 57. Yeah. Pretty good. The visuals in that movie are amazing. They're yeah. stunning. It's stunning. Um, the critic score is 46%. Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right. So a little lower. Well, critics don't like horror movies. No, they, they never don't. get a good review. They don't. And it really was kind of a horror movie. I mean, it was just a, for disturbing material. Yeah, so. it was. It was kind of a thriller. Yeah. It was psychological, but I yeah. mean, there. But it had some. I mean, it had some horrifying images. So you know. Yeah. See, I make like a horror. distinction between horror and thriller, depending on like, I don't know if it's sort of a monster movie. Mm-hmm. I tend to put it more in that horror category. Mm-hmm. If it's more of like there's a bad guy, but it's not like a monster. Mm. It's not some sort of fictional beast coming after you. I tend to put that more in the psychological thriller. So the original Halloween would be psychological thriller, and all the Halloweens that came after that was monster movies, horror. Yeah. Gotcha. That's kind of how I classify them in my very weird, (laughs) slightly autistic brain. (laughs) Slightly autistic up next is The Hunted with Tommy Lee Jones and Benicio Del Toro. I have heard. I, this movie is awesome. I don't think I've seen it. I don't think it. we've seen that it one. It was really I've heard good. Of that one. There is a, a really cool improvised knife fight in there. Like, I mean, they the, basically the idea is like, I think he's like special forces or something like that. And somebody's got to go track him down. And, and basically they find rocks, make knives out of these rocks in the wilderness. Hmm. But it, How it's crazy. yeah, it's a uh, it's a really neat movie. Of course, I love Tommy Lee Jones. Yeah, yeah. he's I'm, it's it's hard to find anything good. that I yeah. don't like. Forty seven percent audience score, mm-hmm. pretty decent. Twenty nine critics. Really? Mm. So, huh? Well, I, I'm gonna go ahead and say that that was definitely a dude movie. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Like I had a hard time sticking with that one when like, we watched it. Like Van Damme, dude. Or worse, like no, what's like that it's, guy's name? It, it's like um, yeah. it's like a lot of Harrison Ford movies. Oh, like well, you like Harrison could Ford en- movies. you could enjoy I them enjoy as a them. chick, but like it just has that like man feel. Mm. Yes. Yeah, so. Speaking of dude movies, <laughs> the next one on this list is Man on Fire. That was a good. One. That That's movie's a great movie. awesome. That was, and this is this one. is the perfect representation of what this whole list is talking about. The critic score is thirty nine percent. The audience score is eighty nine. Mm-hmm. Which one was that one? I don't know. It's, that I've seen um, Denzel Washington. Denzel yeah. Washington is protecting little Dakota Fanning. Mm-hmm. He's her bodyguard. Seen bodyguard. This. Oh, Mexico. It's like a. I've not seen he's this. like she's like a diplomat's like daughter or oh, something. Okay. He duct tapes a grenade inside of a man's butt. Yeah, it's great. So great. <laughs> All right, and, and you, we we need to watch this. Yeah, oh, I love Denzel like, Washington. That, that he, scene is, it's a very good movie. He plays a character. He's kind of at the end of his rope. You know, he's kind of like he plays a lot of characters like that. That that's a very a burned out ex CIA operative. Yeah. yeah, and so he's got nothing to lose. He's, and so when when she gets taken, he goes ballistic, and yeah. it's well, so like, great. He's, yeah, it's he's so doing it, the the feel I got from it was. 
He's basically on babysitting detail, writing this out till retirement. Oh, I see. And then she gets taken. Here's the critics consensus that decided that it was only 39%. But this sentence totally makes me want to watch the movie. (laughs) Man on fire starts out well, but it goes over the top in the violent second half. Yes, but it's it's all it's about revenge. It's so good, yeah. though. It, 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 you see it, him snap. Right. It, they, it, it makes you... To me, a really good story is one that, if it's got something horrible in it, it's for a reason. It's to make you understand what the character's going through and to empathize with them and be able to live out vicariously through them. You, you're getting to see his revenge on these people who took they, her. These, these critics should probably not watch John Wick. Up next with a... Critic score of 44% and an audience score of 76% starring what I believe we should now consider friend of the show, Nicolas Cage. Nicky Cage! National Treasure. Oh, I enjoyed that movie. I enjoyed it too. I, I really like it. I, I'm actually very surprised the critic score is that low on it. What was it again? 44. 40. You know, to oh. be honest though, because I'm kind of not, because... National Treasure was one of those movies that was like, it's like borderline right in the middle between a kid's movie and an adult's movie. Mm-hmm. And so, and critics really tend to hate those kinds of yeah. movies. They want you to go either one way or the other. They don't want it to be a kid-friendly adult movie or right. an adult-friendly kid movie. The critic consensus here, I think, perfectly sums up the problem with critics. <laughs> <laughs> National Treasure is no treasure. But it's a fun ride for those who can forgive it. It's highly improbable plot. So basically what it's saying is, we cannot suspend our disbelief yes. for an hour and a half. Do it's, they not watch fantasy movies? You uh, See, so you have to be able to do that. I mean, and, and I'm, I realize there are some movies that you just can't. You can't. There's some things that happen that are so ridiculous that you, that you, you they lose the audience. But... To enjoy any good movie, you have to be able to suspend disbelief for a while. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's yeah, why. Absolutely. I, otherwise, I wouldn't watch any science fiction. Right. I mean, it's right. all. Yeah. Most all of it is ridiculous, but yeah. you can't be get critical. You've got to be able to just go for the ride. See, you know? and I think one of the the treasures of National Treasure was Riley, that character. Mm-hmm. I loved him. Sharp wit, really funny. You know, good comedy relief, but also like just a really awesome character yeah. mm-hmm. you know where nick cage tends to be a little you know we're gonna steal the he's in know, a really like serious over really the top. Goofy. you know he was a good foil to that yeah and he's cute yeah he was fun to watch so. <laughs> mm-hmm. oh yeah keelan <laughs> keelan appreciated it so moving on we've got one that i have i have extremely mixed feelings on constantine so it had a an audience score of 72 percent and a critic score of 46. As a comic adaptation, it's terrible. Oh, yeah. As a standalone movie, it is awesome. <clears throat> it's now, fantastic. Wait, remind me of this again. I don't know if I've seen it or not. Uh, is it Who stars in it? Keanu, Keanu Reeves. Reeves. Yes, I have seen it. Where he's in a fallen angel. Uh, Shia LaBeouf. No, he's not a fallen Shia angel. Shia LaBeouf's no, in it? He's like mm-hmm. a, something nice. to do with a... He's got yeah, wings. He, he he's is, got wings, right? Didn't no. He? No. What is there's, it? Okay. There is there are angels in it. Yeah, it's got That's angels. That's why the wings he's, are there. On he's the cover. kind of like a detective that deals in angels and demons. Yeah, okay. he's like a PI. Does it take place in like a uh, a small gas station or something? I'm part of the movie or a roadside store. There's a store there's something. a scene in a liquor store. Liquor store where a priest drinks himself to death. Yes. Okay, I have seen it. It's been a long yeah. time, but I have seen it. The Hellblazer comic which is what constantine is based on keanu reeves is not john constantine mm. the way the all the other characters were represented again not a good adaptation forgiving that i love this movie i've watched this movie repeatedly mm-hmm. it's really good but yeah. so like i said it, it's it's sort of um mixed with me uh now if you do want a great in- adaptation of the comic book constantine the the TV show, TV show is was really, really good. good, and it sucks. It only got one season. The problem but. I see with uh, them adapting any comic into a movie or TV show or something is because the people they're not trying to make get approval from the audience of the comic book. You know, mm-hmm. they don't care. Yeah. They're trying. Mm-hmm. They're trying to grab a good story and do what they want to with it. Make the changes they think are okay. Mm-hmm. Losing a lot of the essence of what the story was about to begin with. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. On the other side of that, 
I really felt like other adaptations of the Green Arrow were awful. I hated the Green Arrow in like the Justice League cartoons and stuff like that. Thought he was a cheesy, stupid Robin Hood ripoff. But the Green Arrow that uh, Stephen Amell plays in Arrow, amazing adaptation of somebody who was completely spoiled rotten his entire life and went through hell and became this badass that's mm-hmm. going to come back and like change things. And he's got that only I can do this sort of right. attitude. I really enjoyed that. This next movie, our household actually has a decisive opinion of. I love this movie. She does not like it. Super with Rain Wilson. I hate that never movie. I've never even Super. heard of it. Me either. It's, there's, he's, there's a thing that happens in it that... he's. Rain Wilson plays this guy who's just, he's an odd fella and decides that he wants to be a crime fighter. The previews for this led me to believe it was going to be funny. And it was not. Yeah, it's, it's actually, I mean, it takes a very It takes a very dark, shift dark turn and I don't like it. Basically, he, he gets his costume and he goes around with like a hammer. He just hits people in the head with a hammer and ends up like killing people. And His tagline is "Shut up, crime!" Shut up, crime! <laughs> and, it seems uh, like it's going to be that funny. Does it's sound not. Like funny. Yeah, it's 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 got uh, like what's it. her name from Juno in it. Uh, Ellen Page. Yeah, and Liv Tyler's in it also. Oh wow, so it's one of those and hipster movies. Kevin Bacon, <laughs> Michael Rooker. I don't know what it is exactly about this movie that that I like so much, but uh, I just do. Coincidentally, is directed by. James Gunn. Mm-hmm. Who, I thought it was going to be along the, the same lines as Kick Ass, and it was not. <sighs> or Mystery Man. No, <laughs> Mystery Man. Mystery Man. Mystery Man oh, is such a good movie. movie. Uh, a funny story about Mystery Man. When I was in high school, was when it came out. My my best friend and I at the time, who he was the Baptist preacher son, so <laughs> the, the you know two preacher sons, we decided we wanted to go watch this movie, and we brought along this other friend uh, who was a girl he and i loved this movie we thought it was the funniest thing we'd ever seen in our life <laughs> but she, hated she it. thought it was the stupidest movie ever made now, which which girl was the uh, it's not one of the ones her, yeah. okay that one's not a i would imagine a lot of women wouldn't like it yes it's, oh, i love that movie ridiculous <laughs> loved it yeah. the spleen based on a uh comic book called uh flaming carrot i believe is what it's called next though is a movie I love, The Last Boy Scout. Oh, yes. Yeah. I enjoyed that movie that very much. Um, fun story about that. <laughs> it came out in 91. Yep. Do you want to guess how old I was in 91? Mm-hmm. I was born in 83. <laughs> so I, I was around eight years old when this movie came out. My parents took me and my five-year-old brother six-year-old sister, and my 10-year-old brother to watch this movie in the theater. <sighs> and there's a uh, there's a joke told in this movie. That my five-year-old brother repeated lots of times. To anyone that would listen to it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the whole thing with the cat puppet and that we thought was hilarious. So we repeated it a lot. My parents did not see the error in their ways and kept taking us to inappropriate movies. We had a similar family story with the with um, the original National Lampoon's <laughs> Vacation. Yes, the story's great. Yeah, my my uh, sister picked up a choice phrase from that movie when they were in the uh, they're going the through Chicago, neighbor, going through the bad neighborhood of uh, no, it's St. Louis actually. Oh, they yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> he rolls down his window and he's yeah. like, "Hey, can you tell us how to get to you know blah blah blah." Yeah, the guy yells back at him. So she she was out in front of my grandmother's house yelling that at cars as we drive by when she was like eight years old. I have not seen this next one, but I'm going to guess at least you have, and probably you. I wish people could. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been completely derailed because somehow this movie made it onto the list and the audience score is lower than the critic score. What? 39 for the critics, 24 for the audience. For Anaconda. Oh. I love Anaconda. Oh my gosh. I love Anaconda. That is such an awful, 
awful movie. It's I good. love it it's, so much. It's so funny. It crosses that line of so bad that it's good. It is so um, funny. There is a scene. John, uh, John Voight, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> there is a Baby scene. Bird. And I, 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 Jennifer Lopez. I don't want to give too much detail, but but basically, somebody gets eaten, <laughs> and it is the funniest scene I oh, have yeah. ever seen um, in a creature movie ever we, of life. We have passed the point of spoilers because this movie is twenty years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It came well, out in ninety seven. You know, but I figure if Happy wants to watch it, I don't want to spoil the scene for him. <laughs> oh, that, I don't think he's going. That to. ship has sailed. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of reasons. One is, uh, I just, I, it didn't appeal to me. Second, um, I don't particularly care for snakes. <laughs> he is putting that y'all mild. Should, my mother does not either. And y'all should have seen my mom watching this movie was the funniest. <laughs> I, I think watching my mother watching this movie was just, a, was almost as funny as watching the movie itself. It was great. I, I was very... I was still pretty young when that movie came out, like 13, 14. And I knew then that it was a steaming pile of poop. Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Have you seen Anaconda? Uh, sorry. Have you seen uh, Lake Placid? Oh, I yes, love that one Lake too. Lake Placid is a good movie. So good. Betty White is so brilliant <laughs> in that movie. Oh my gosh. She is so brilliant. That, that I love that movie. a perfect mixture of comedy and action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Lake okay. Placid is a great movie. <laughs> See, I think with Anaconda, the the thing about Anaconda was it wasn't supposed to be a comedy, right? But it was it it was funny, so I think that's kind of where maybe the critics have have <laughs> gone with that. It appears this list is going on for quite a bit longer, so I'm going to stop with this next one, and we may come back at some point and visit the rest of this list. But this last one I want to talk about is honestly one of my favorite movies. And it has a critic score of forty-seven and an audience score of seven, or I'm sorry, of eighty. Mm. And Ooh, nice. It is shooter with Mark Wahlberg. I haven't seen that yet, but oh, I've been wanting to see that. I, I really so enjoy Mark Wahlberg. I really. You haven't gotten around in the last eleven years to yeah. watching Shooter. I have not. I've got a lot of movies I haven't gotten around to watch. <laughs> uh, this is the first movie I ever saw um, Michael Pena or mm-hmm. Kate Mara in. I like Michael Pena, and uh, I really enjoy both of those. Those actors and uh, it's just I don't know it, it's such a good it's such a good movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously the the uh, the critics complain it has plot holes, but honestly, show me one movie that I doesn't. was about to say that's and like every movie I, ever created has plot holes. Yeah, it's just I it's it's one of those movies <laughs> that I can go and watch over and over and over. Because I'm a plot hole. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. <laughs> Switching gears. Um, before we switch gears, I just want to point out something. Um, since we recorded last, my husband has gotten slightly hotter just by one degree. Somebody <laughs> promoted uh, to second degree black belt since we last recorded. Yay. 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 How was that test for you? In some ways, it was easier than... My black belt test. But in other ways, it was so much worse. Well, for one, you're an old man now. Yeah. (laughs) I am 13 years older than when I I took my first black belt test. You were in your 20s the last time you took a black belt test. That is how math works, yes. And now you're you're super old. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You're super old. Yeah. super old. At the time of this recording, it's been... Two and a half weeks, mm-hmm. and I still have a giant bruise on the Enormous side of my knee. Bruise. Took a lot of work to get to that point, but glad it's done. I don't really have anything funny to say oh. <laughs> about it. It was uh, it was a whole lot of ow. Yeah. Your neck yeah. Um, well, well, the fun part for me was I got to be on the black belt panel because I. I do have a black belt, but I am not higher rank than either of the people that were testing. Um, so I got to be on the black belt panel and they're like, they announced then, okay, this half of the room is going to be assessing this person. This half of the room is going to be assessing this person. Write down your comments. So I had to comment on uh, everything my husband was doing. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised that they 
let you do that yeah, because me too. I mean I figured that would almost be a conflict of interest. Well, there it's just for them to look at and take into consideration. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. it's also for him to take home all of those and look at and see what he can improve on. And there were some of the things that he did that I feel like I was his harshest critic. Like at one point I wrote, "Don't hit yourself with the bow staff." Yeah, <laughs> good. that's a good tip. Did good you tip. comment on his butt? You no, I did not. Butt, did I you? tried to keep it as professional <laughs> as I could. Um, but I did do a little bit of this uh, whenever people were making notes and like you had to rate things like on a scale of one to 10, what you thought of them to make sure I wasn't being biased. I was peeking around and looking at everybody else's and be like, and, okay, yeah, I, I thought that was about right. All right. Good. It, it makes it sound like, you know, the, this half was all that, that selected everything. I mean, we, we each did things individually. So everybody was watching and they all went discussed afterwards. It was more of just, you know, we don't want to give you two different papers to write on. So you are going to write notes for this person, and this half is going to write notes for this person. Uh, yeah. So you're not getting things mixed up. Getcha. Right. I got gotcha. you. But the, uh, obviously the hardest part was the the sparring at the end. And, uh, man, I trained for that almost exclusively for the last – two months beforehand like i did i actually did very little of training for other things you know every once in a while i'd I'd work on things to make sure things were just fresh i might as well have just walked in off the street for all that that (laughs) was worth i don't think so i think that you you did really well you held your own but uh i decided to do something that in my mind it made sense in the moment i was like i will be his last fight because I'm going to go in there, and while I'm fighting him, I'm going to encourage him. I'm going to keep him going and all of that. What I ended up doing is I walked into the ring with a very tired Happy Bandit. And um, somebody said, oh, man, you know, don't hit her. Don't hit her in the face. She'll get mad at you. And my response right before we start is, he better hit me. Mm-hmm. He did. He, <laughs> repeatedly well no like the very first thing that happened was he nearly knocked me out wow he hit me really hard in the face and i spit out a piece of a broken tooth oh. and kept fighting up i i will say that i did have this minor thought this little voice in the back of my head during all my training that thought i wonder if i just knocked the people out real quick if i have you know, the next minute and a half as a break. <laughs> but I don't think that would have worked that way. No, I, but, I got right back up and started hitting him back. But, so it, but yeah. It definitely was not without its its errors and flubs. Uh, but, yeah, it is what it is. And, and uh, you succeeded. Yeah. yeah. You did what yeah. you set out to do. And that's really cool because, I mean, I feel like, like like you said, getting your getting your first black belt in your twenties that's not so unusual, you know, a twenty year old getting a black belt, but you know, then thirteen years later, going back and and getting a second degree is really 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 commendable, because there's not a whole lot of thirty somethings that would would have the desire to, or even so, in some cases, even be physically able to. Yeah, I so see. for you to do that is a huge accomplishment. Um, I saw a statistic that out of people who come to a dojo and sign up for karate class and take a karate class, only 50% will make it past green belt. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't even but make it past white belt. So. Only <laughs> only 1% will make it to black belt. Yeah. And of that 1%, only, I think it's like 10% of that 1% go further and get another degree. Mm-hmm. I'm very proud of you. Um, it was both, uh, uh, let's see, inspired and terrified uh, because I know that that's coming for me too, mm-hmm. and I'm working on that. You have how many more months until you go? Well, on? it's not for certain that I'm going to test okay. in in June, but that's my target that's to target? be ready by then. Awesome. If they choose not to test me, then then I will keep training and get ready for January. Awesome. So, but yeah, um, that's my target. But I was really impressed. A lot of people were really impressed with uh, with his heart and also Kyler, the other guy that tested with him. Um, both kept fighting through injuries. Both kept going and That's, did a great job. That's awesome. So 